千里之行，始于足下。A journey of a thousand miles begins beneath the feet. We now gather in the Tao to travel the journey together. Welcome to Tao Talks with Derek Lin, where we take a deep dive into the Tao Te Ching by Lao Tzu. As always, I want to extend my welcome to you. Thank you for joining us. I would like to invite you to center your thoughts and direct your attention to this moment in time, to the here and now, to be fully present and mindfully aware, as we are ready ourselves for this sacred process in the Tao with one another. So I want to show you this particular slide. To the left-hand side, you see the valley. To the right-hand side, you see what you may think of as the Buddha. So to clarify, this is not the Buddha that was the founder of Buddhism, but oftentimes mistaken as that in the West. This is in fact the Maitreya Buddha. In Buddhism, this is the Buddha of the prophecy, the Buddha that is foretold will come in the future. Specific name for that is the Maitreya Buddha. So the founder of Buddhism was the Sakyamuni Buddha. That's a different person. And the Sakyamuni Buddha uh, was not a portly individual. The Maitreya Buddha manifested as a portly monk in ancient China hundreds of years ago, whereas the Sakyamuni Buddha uh, lived in India 2,500 years ago. So again, different individuals. But the essence of the Maitreya Buddha is important and has correspondence with the valley. How so? Well, the valley to the left is open, as we talked about. It is accommodating and welcoming of all. That is the wide open nature of the valley. It provides its protection and riches to everyone in it. All of that abundance free for the taking, free for the asking, no complaints. It merely provides. Then the Maitreya Buddha. The big stomach of the Maitreya Buddha, as I mentioned in the previous slide, denotes someone who is big of heart, symbolic of being big hearted, not petty, someone who is tolerant and giving. And this is goodness that leads to abundance. In the statue that you see on the right hand side of this slide, there is a lot of kids climbing all over the spelling, laughing Maitreya Buddha. And this is a depiction of how the Maitreya Buddha really doesn't mind does not find the kids to be annoying, is happy to be with them. That is the nature of the happy, quote unquote, fat Buddha. It's okay. You can do whatever you want. The Buddha is perfectly fine with that. The Buddha, this particular Buddha, the Maitreya Buddha, is characterized as open and accepting will happily provide divine protection to you, prosperity to all. So if people like these kids want to, quote unquote, take advantage of this Buddha, he's not going to mind that one bit. So typically in the West, we see the image 
of this Buddha, and we think, oh, that's the happy Buddha, that's the fat Buddha. We think it's a symbol for good luck. Now, the teaching from the traditions from ancient Chinese culture goes a little deeper than that. For you see, it is the happiness. It's the generosity and the giving spirits that lead naturally to good luck. The positive energy that you manifest, if you possess those qualities of happiness, generosity, that giving spirit, that positive energy will come back naturally to you as good karma, good luck. So that's why it's a symbol of good luck. It, of course, makes the Maitreya Buddha the natural choice for Chinese merchants everywhere in the world. Certainly true in ancient times in China, but as the Chinese people migrated to different parts of the world, they brought the Maitreya Buddha with them as a powerful reminder, because those who know the essence of this Buddha will understand why it is so important to be nice and why it is so natural to be nice. The valley is nice to living things, naturally. The Maitreya Buddha is nice to everyone, naturally. We want to be nice to everyone we interact with. So the, um, it's a little strange when you contemplate that the, this combination of the image of the Maitreya Buddha universally recognized, but then virtually unknown in terms of name. Like people will think, yeah, of happy Buddha, fat Buddha, but they don't know the name Maitreya Buddha. So that alone is unusual and unique among all the various religious figures one comes across in the West. Let me jump to the summary to talk about what we have discussed. And of course, the foremost concept that we talked about today is the valley spirit. So as a quick summary of that, think about the openness, the receptivity, that the valley is accommodating, it is welcoming, it is tolerant, it's compassionate, and there is that generosity of spirit. Of course, there's the nurturing and protective aspect of the valley. The valley cradles all myriad things within it. The valley provides sustenance to all. It's not just a container, it's the container for living things. Taking a cue from that, we also want to approach other people with the protective embrace and the compassionate nature, the generosity of the valley. And lastly, let's talk about the eternal nature of the valley spirit. The valley spirit is synonymous with the yin principle, which is a universal principle that has existed since the beginning of time and continues on throughout all of eternity. This is reflective of the immortal human spirit. And here I'd like to recall to mind the example that we went through about the valley undergoing seasonal changes. So no matter how many different seasons have passed for the valley, the valley remains the valley. Its essence is still the spirits of the valley. In the same way, it doesn't matter how many lifetimes you and I go through, you remain the same individual as yourself.
Our meeting has come to an end, but the journey continues on. Until next time, may the Tao fill you with peace and happiness.